part 93 of C-Sharp tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what happens if shared resources are not protected from concurrent access in a multi-threaded program and how to protect shared resources from concurrent access. So, what happens if shared resources are not protected from concurrent access in a multi-threaded program? The output or behavior of the program can become inconsistent. Let's understand this with an example. Within this program class, we have this total field at the class level. And within this add 1 million method, we are adding 1 million to that total field. Within the main method, we are invoking add 1 million three times. And finally, we are printing the value that is present within the total field. So this is not a multi-threaded program. It's a single threaded program. So when we execute this program, the execution is going to start within the main method. So by default, we're going to get one thread for free. That is the UI thread. And that single thread is going to execute all of this code. So here, concurrency is not an issue. And protecting shared resources is not a concern. I have this exact same code within Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and build this solution. And let's open this project folder within Windows Explorer. Let's navigate to the bin and debug directory. That's where we have the project executable. Now let's copy this path and let's try to run this program from the Visual Studio command prompt. So here I have Visual Studio command prompt. So let's change the directory to the directory where we have the project executable. And then the project executable is threading example.exe. So let's go ahead and run this five times and notice that all the five times we get the same output that is 3 million and that's what we expect the program to print because this add 1 million method you know is going to add 1 million to that total field we call it three times so the total should be 3 million and that's what this program is printing okay all right now let's rewrite this program to use multiple threads so here we are creating three threads and each thread is calling add 1 million Okay, and then on each of the threads, we are calling start method and we are also calling join method. So why are we calling join method? Because we want the UI thread to wait, you know, until all the three threads complete so that this total field is updated and then the UI thread can go ahead and print the value that is present within the total field. Okay, so let's go ahead and change the code that we have here. So we need to bring in system dot threading namespace. So let's go ahead and do that first. And then let's create a thread class instance. Let's call it T1 equals new thread. And we want this thread to execute add 1 million method. So let's go ahead and create three instances of the thread class. And then let's invoke start method on all of the three threads. Let's invoke join method again on all of the three threads. All right, now let's build the project. So now this program is a multi-threaded program. Let's navigate to Visual Studio command prompt. Let's clear the screen and let's execute Look at that, we get 3 million, that's right. Let's run it once again. Look at that, we get a different number. Now we get 3 million, 3 million, 3 million. But look at this, every time we run it, we are not getting 3 million always. We are getting a different number every time we run it. Okay, so why is that inconsistency? Okay, that the inconsistent output is basically because the total field is a shared resource here and it is not protected from concurrent access by these multiple threads. Okay, and this operator right here, total plus plus, you know, the plus plus operator, this is not thread safe. And that's why we have that inconsistent output every time we run this program. Okay, and there are several ways to fix this and I have, um, you know, discussed here two of the options. One option is to use the interlocked class and this class has got increment method which is going to increment a specified uh, variable uh, value and store the result as an atomic operation. Okay, so we are going to change the code that is present with an add one million function from total plus plus to interlocked dot increment and, and pass our field that we want 
to be updated as an atomic operation. In this case, the total field, okay, and we need to pass it as a reference parameter so that it gets updated. Okay, so let's change that to that and see if it works as expected. So interlocked dot increment and let's pass our total field. That's it. So let's build the project. Let's navigate to Visual Studio Command Prompt. Let's actually clear the screen and let's run Look at this, every time we run it, no matter how many times we run it, we get the same output. Okay, 3 million. So the program is now working as expected. So one option is to use the interlocked class. Uh, the other option is to basically use locking. Okay, create a lock object and then lock the um, section which updates that field. So here, this is the section that is updating the field. So when we use this lock, only one thread can enter that piece of code so that you know the field is correctly updated. So let's go ahead and use that instead of interlock.increment method and see if it works as expected. So at the class level, let's create a static object and maybe let's call it lock equals new object and then you know here it is total plus plus so let's actually change it to use the lock so lock of lock and then let's build a solution let's clear the screen let's run five times and notice that we get the same output okay so basically to fix this there are several issues and uh, we have explored two of the i mean two of the options here one is interlock.increment and the other one is basically locking okay now which one of these options is better Okay, from a performance perspective, using interlocked class is better over using locking. Okay, let's actually measure the performance and to do that, I'm actually going to write some code here and to do that, we need to use system.diagnostics namespace. So let's go ahead and bring that in, system.diagnostics and let's, there's a class called stopwatch, let's call it stopwatch equals stopwatch dot start new so when this program begins execution we are starting a stopwatch and then when it prints the total we are going to stop it and then finally we will print the elapsed time so we have this stopwatch object and there is this property elapsed milliseconds. Uh, actually, let's use elapsed ticks. So what is a tick? A tick is, is again a measurement of time. Basically, one millisecond contains 10,000 ticks. Okay. So basically, if you want to know how many ticks are there in a second or an hour, there's another class that you can use. So console dot write line. So there is this time span object. And this time span object has got, you know, these enum values here, ticks per day, ticks per hour, ticks per millisecond, you know. You can use those to find out how many ticks are there in a second or a millisecond, basically. All right. So at the moment, we are using locking method to protect, uh, you know, the shared resources. And let's see what is the time we get. Let's build this project. Let's navigate to the command prompt and let's execute the command. Look at that. That is the time. It has taken, you know, 3, 2, 3, 3, 4. Let's run it once more. Okay. Something like 2, 9, 3, 7, 2, 5. Let's run it three times. So around 200 to 300 ticks. I mean, not 100. It's more than that. But, you know, those many ticks are taken to complete this program when we are using the lock object. Now, instead of the lock object, let's use interlock.increment method and see what time it takes to do that. So let's get rid of that one and let's say 
enter log dot increment let's pass ref and the name of the field is total All right let's build the solution so that is with locking now let's run once again look at that it's much lesser with interlocked class okay so from a performance perspective using interlocked class is better over using locking locking locks out all the other thread except a single thread to read and increment the total variable so this will ensure the total variable is updated safely but the downside is that since all the other threads are locked out there's a performance hit uh, but keep in mind the interlocked class can only be used with addition subtraction um, you know on an int or a long field but if it anything else other than that then probably we'll have to resort to using locking mechanism okay um, the interlocked class again has methods for incrementing decrementing adding and reading variables atomically and this is the code that we have seen you know to basically get the time in ticks and uh, we have also seen that the time span object can be used to find out how many ticks are there in a second or in a millisecond that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day